Saint Luna Island has been my home for the past six months, and I couldn't wait to get away from it. All this outdoorsy time might be fine for some wild Amazon chicky, but I needed to feel asphalt under my feet. I was honored to be included on Dr. Rash's team of researchers. That I had to spend my time in the sweaty hell of this island is just a nuisance, a paying of dues. Dr. Rash, in recognition of my ability, immediately put me in charge of the command trails, much to the chagrin of some of the other students, especially the other girls. But if then, Dr. Rash obviously sees my talent compared to those panthers. I do enjoy my afternoon jaunts around the island, not for the sake of the island, but for the privacy they supply. It's pleasant to be away from everyone, the petty bickering and the nutmanship. The walks allowed me the time to let my mind wander and think, a defrag for my brain. On this particular day, I was surprised to see a small yacht pulling close to the shore. No one ever came close to this island. Some of the old charts show the island as property of the CDC Infectious Animal Research and Treatment Labs. Some just say private, no trespassing. There are several signs on the beach that warn visitors they are trespassing on federal lands and that use of deadly force is authorized in some areas. I had a strange discussion with Dr. Rash last night. I was going over my status report with him and... While the intelligence level of the subjects continues to grow at a rate far beyond that which was anticipated, there seems to be a downside to the treatments. Several animals have been acting markedly more aggressively towards the handlers. My next slide shows the number of events involving... These... events, as you call them? Has anyone been injured? No, sir. There have been a few close calls. Subject 2305 has been muzzled. Muzzled? Why? Was the code word not effective? The code word worked fine, but the handler felt that- Miss Shaw, I put you in charge of these trials because I believe you have what it takes to become an excellent team leader. Yes, Dr. Rash, and I appreciate the opportunity. However, I fail to see- Don't let some animal handler intimidate you into jeopardizing the trials because he is afraid of a little nip. The research we're doing here is to help our troops win wars. <sighs> he didn't intimidate me, sir. The handler felt he was in danger. Then fire the damn handlers! They aren't running the trials. You are! No muzzles on any of the animals. Yes, sir. I will have 2305's muzzle removed. <sighs> I'm sorry, Miss Shaw. I didn't mean to yell. Our friends at DARPA are very specific about what they are looking for. If the code word doesn't work, we need to go back to reassess our controls. If the handler gives you any problems... He won't, sir. I will release him tomorrow. Would you like me to sit in on the termination? No, sir. I will handle it. Excellent. Miss Shaw, I have high hopes for you. Magic and magical people, the unnatural order is all around us. There are white witches, black witches, demons, vamps, werewolves, shapeshifters, ghosts. It's a protoplasmic party of creature features out there. But unless you know where to look, you won't find them. I know where to look. My name is Harry Strange. Dr. Rash's behavior is beyond odd. I'd never known him to be so thoughtless concerning the handlers. These are big dogs we're working with, especially 2305. I didn't want to let the handler go, but I had given my word to Dr. Rash. I started towards the woods to see what was growling. It sounded like a dog, but at the same time, it didn't. When I was closer, I saw a body propped up by one of the trees. Good lord. Had the dog attacked someone? You! Dog! Get away! There was a man in a raincoat leaning against the tree. His shirt was torn and covered in blood, as was the sleeve of his jacket. I made a mental note that these wounds didn't look like dog bites, thank God. I couldn't find a pulse on the man, and his wrist was cold to the touch. Did the people on that yacht drop off a body on the island, thinking that the indigenous animals would dispose of it? I put my head against the man's chest to hear if there was a heartbeat. At first, I heard nothing. Then, faintly, I heard something. It could have been wishful thinking. <laughs> Goodness! Four dogs walked out of the woods. Their heads were hung low, and they were snarling. Each one had a collar from our research facility. Xanadu! Sit! Xanadu! Curious. The control word wasn't working. Xanadu! Sit! Xanadu! Xanadu! Sleep! Xanadu!
you do? Damn. I need to get that branch in the ground. Got it. No! Get away from him. I said no. Xanadu! No, Xanadu! <sighs> Screw this. Take that! I warned you. <laughs> no! You will not get us! No! Get back! <laughs> Xanadu! Sleep! Xanadu! Ow! Get back! Why aren't you obeying? Xanadu! Stop! Xanadu! From behind me, I heard what sounded like a woman screaming. In slow motion, I saw the nearest dog's eyes pop out of its head, as if some invisible hand was squeezing the back of its skull. I started to lose consciousness. The last thing I remember seeing was the dead man standing up. I faded in. Where was I? Last thing I remember was Maddie's face. No, wait, th that was the before time. Ugh. I wanted to move, but I couldn't communicate that to the rest of my body. I smelled water. Salt water. It was near the ocean. Far away in a haze, I saw an angel approach. Had I really died this time? What was it the angel said? Look for salvation when my task is done. Had I reached salvation? No, that, that couldn't be. I was shot. By some little teenage vamp fangirl. Veil. Vale. That's who I was looking for. Then who was this angel? She was wearing a white shirt, buttoned up a little higher than I would have liked. It was a conservative top, but... Still featured her body in one easy-to-define package. A package I would define as wow. That I was able to appreciate her figure was a good thing. Let me know that most things were still functioning in 5x5. Five five. I drifted off again. Something was pulling my foot. I didn't know what exactly. I couldn't really feel my foot. It was like when your leg goes to sleep and then you try to move it. There was a wolf at my foot. No, not a wolf, a dog of some type. Big dog. Probably a German Shepherd. Yes, it was definitely a German Shepherd. It had black and brown markings in a pattern like one of those cave paintings. The dog was pulling on my foot, and I felt myself starting to slide down whatever it was that was propping me up. The angel who wasn't an angel swooped down, yelling something at the dog. As I faded out, I noted that her hair was auburn and smelled like strawberry. Wondered why she was putting her head to my chest. The angel keeps saying Xanadu. Maybe she isn't an angel after all. Maybe she's casting a spell. Maybe my angel's a demon. I said no. Xanadu! No, Xanadu! <sighs> Screw this. Take that! I warned you. She just split that dog's head wide open with a branch. She's either saving our lives or preparing some elaborate spell. No! Get back! Xanadu! Sleep! Xanadu! Ow. Get back! Why aren't you obeying? Xanadu! Stop! Xanadu! I have to help her and figure out whose side she's on later. No gun. That's right. I fell off the boat. Hey! Hey, Angel. Great. No voice or gun. Wait, what's this? Carmen's sonic blaster thing. It's still wet. Let's hope it works and doesn't kill us. Maybe it'll just buy us enough time to get out of here. Gotta try to stand up and push the button. What are you doing? Morning, sunshine. Most likely this won't hurt a bit. Get your fingers out of my mouth! What is the meaning of this? Untie me. Good. No fangs. One more test and we'll be finished here. Test? What are you on about? Untie me! In a second. Just need to make sure you're not a halfling. Halfling? Fangs? 
You're crazy. What did you do to the dogs? They're dead. I saved us. They were going to eat us. No, they weren't. I had it under control. Just once. Just once I'd like to rescue someone who didn't say I had it all under control. When the only thing they had under control was their bladder. Barely. Rescued me? You were about to be doggy chow until I came along. There was a dog sniffing your body... Hey, wait. You were dead. I checked your pulse. Your shirt, you looked like you'd been shot. I was. Shotgun right in the chest. Still stings like a bitch, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> no one can survive a shotgun blast to the chest. And yet, here I am. You're crazy, you know. Actually... It's most likely just low blood sugar due to the carb depletion. The healing process really drains the body. But I suppose if you consider the alternative... Look, I don't know who you are, but... I'm sorry. Harry Strange, private investigator. And you are? Strange? <laughs> now why doesn't that surprise me? Have you heard of me? Should I? Hey, what is that? This? Holy water. It was in my pocket kit. Luckily, the salt water didn't damage it. Pocket kit? Sure. Batman has his utility belt. I have a pocket kit. No bigger than an iPhone. Holds all sorts of useful things. I made it after I lost my last jacket fighting a Sogoth. Now, if you just open up... You expect me to drink that? Well, yes. It's the final test. If you can drink this without your teeth falling out or vomiting blood, I'll know it's safe to untie you. Lovely. Are you some type of fundy? Fundy? Religious fundamentalist. <laughs> Hardly, miss. Elizabeth Shaw. Well, Liz, drink this and... No, not Liz, not Beth, and never ever Lizzie. Elizabeth. I stand corrected, Elizabeth. Now, drink up. I am not drinking that. How do I know it's not poison or some type of date rape drug? Has it occurred to you that if I wanted to rape or kill you, I would have done it by now? <sighs> Very well. Watch. See? Oh, wait. That's not the water. <coughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a little stale, but if you're human, it won't be a problem. If I'm human, what else might I be? Well, you could be a halfling, or a witch, or a demon of some sort. You have the body for a succubus, but not the demeanor. Bad attitude. On second thought, Lilith, are you in there? Hey! Stop that! I have a bad attitude. I tried to save you from the dogs, and this is how you repay me. You tie me to a tree and cop a feel of my gums. What else did you feel while I was unconscious? If you put a hand on me, I will... Elizabeth, I promise. I didn't touch anything I didn't need to. If I drink that water, will you untie me? Assuming you don't start molting, yes. I swear, Mr. Strange, you've been out in the sun too long. You might be right. What's today's date? April 12th, I think. How long have you held me prisoner? Oh, no. I've been out of pocket for weeks. Hurry up and drink. I've got work that needs to be done. Really, it's just holy water. Fine. Ugh, that's horrible. Holy water? Yes, you're fine. 100% mortal. Here, let me untie you. I need to get back to St. Augustine. Just like that. You keep me tied here for God knows how long, and now, just like that, you're ready to go. I need some answers, buddy. You were dead. You as much said so yourself. You hadn't a pulse and your body was cold. Oh, look, you tore my jacket. Yes, no pulse, I know. I have a complicated constitution. I can heal from most wounds, mortal or otherwise. Otherwise? How close are we to St. Augustine? About 35 miles by boat. Great. No signal. There are no cell towers out here. We have a radio in the compound. Boats, transports, helicopters? You'll have to see Dr. Rash. Only he can authorize transportation off the island. I don't need authorization, I just need a boat. Then, you need to see Dr. Rash. He has the keys. Sounds like a bit of a micromanager. The doctor runs a tight ship. Where are you going? To the compound. It's that way. 
Right. Listen, I'm moving on pure willpower. I need a carb replacement right away. Do you have a cafeteria in this compound? And what about those dogs? What are you doing on this island? Why do you need carbs? Because being dead is very taxing on the body. You will probably be arrested for trespassing. This is government property. Based on the animal training or gene splicing or whatever it is you people are creating, think they'll be able to negotiate my way out of any arrest. I'm sure it was just a fluke. Those dogs weren't responding to the command word. Xanadu is the command word? Yes, Xanadu. All the dogs have a chip implanted in their cortex. When the command word is spoken, it is supposed to activate and override any behavior. You might want to get your money back on those chips. I don't know what happened. When the sleep command is given, a dose of melatonin X is released and the dog is immediately put to sleep. Sounds a bit barbaric. What? No, not dead sleep, nap sleep. At least we don't blow their eyes out of their heads. It did save us. I had it all, had it under, all under control. control. Yes. I know. That's strange. What is? The guard shack is empty. This is the main entrance in and out of the camp. Where is the guard? Called away? Dr. Rash would never leave this gate unattended. Why? It's not like there are any natives to keep out. It's not about keeping people out. Even the occasional boaters that end up on the beach never make it this far. Keeping people in, then? Don't be ridiculous. We do animal research here. We want to make sure the animals don't get out. Because animals are known for using the main entrances when they want out. Hello? It's Elizabeth Shaw. Hello? What? I'm a project director. I have keys for everything. Why would you need keys if all you're worried about are the animals? Are you developing dogs with opposable thumbs? Because let me tell you, I'd be the first in line to buy one of those. Very funny, Mr. Strange. This is a major infraction of the rules. You kind of have an obsession with the rules. You know that, right? Rules keep things moving. Without rules, we have anarchy. Who are you calling? Dr. Rasha's office. Someone needs to be out here. Anything can wander into the woods. We've seen the things that can wander out of here. What? Is there food in there? There's probably a vending machine or fridge or something over by the bathrooms. No one is answering at Dr. Rash's office. I'm going to try the labs. Yes, you do that. I found a vending machine. Do you have any change? The monitors are coming up. I should see something in a moment. Strange. No answer at the lab, either. Never mind. I found something. Try the infirmary. What? I said I don't need any change. Yes. Pop-tarts. Lots and lots of pop-tarts. What? I'll pay for everything. Look, on the monitor. What's that? It's the cafeteria. Look, in the corner, those two women. They are cowering from those dogs. Can you pull the camera back a little? Yes. We've got to help them. I saw some trank guns in the back. Got anything with real bullets? The actual weapons case is in the main building. We don't have many, though. This is a research facility, not a shooting gallery. Right, and I've seen the research. Look there, by the table where the women are hiding. Is that what I think it is? If what you think it is is a severed human leg, then yes, it is what you think it is. We have to get them out. They won't last much longer. Agreed. How many dogs were being trained here? I don't know for sure. A hundred? Uh, what, what are you doing with those? Mm, mm, need the carbs. Would you like one? No, but I am going to get a trank rifle. I'm not going in there unarmed. Can you fire one of those things? My father used to take me fox hunting as a child, Mr. Strange. I'm also rated as a sharpshooter. If you can cook, I just may be falling in love. Where are all the dogs? I don't know. Maybe they're back in their kennels. That doesn't seem likely. Oh, good lord, look at that. One of the guards, I'm guessing? Yes. His name was Larry. He had a wife and a newborn. He was planning to visit them next weekend. Whatever got Larry the guard took him by surprise. His gun was still in its holster. The dogs had ripped open his stomach, tearing and pulling at it until he was laying in a puddle of his own gore. Some of the dogs had stuck their snouts into his chest cavity and pulled out his organs until something or someone had made them run off. I had a feeling that for a kill like this, they'd be back. 
I reached over to Larry's holster and pulled his gun, a Glock 9mm. I also pulled his backup clip. I wasn't interested in sending those dogs nappy. I wanted to put them in a permanent sleep. I ran to catch up with Elizabeth. The door to the cafeteria is right there. Someone put these chairs in front of the doors. I guess they thought they were trapping the dogs in, and they didn't realize there were people trapped in there. Or they wanted to see what the dogs would do if they were trapped. Why do you always see the cynical side to everything? Take a look at Larry back there and then ask me that again. Do you think we orchestrated all this? This senseless loss of human and animal life? Listen. I cannot believe you think we did this on purpose. Not you, Elizabeth. Not those two women in there. Certainly not Larry or any of the other meatbags we've seen on the way over. But someone knew this was a possibility and didn't care. My guess? It was your Dr. Raish. That just shows how little you know about anything. Dr. Rash is a genius and a wonderful man. Tell you what, Miss Shaw. Let's get those two women out and ask them what they think of Dr. Raish. Fine. What's your plan? Oh, now I have to have the plan? Well, I just thought you probably had some type of experience at this sort of thing. I've seen and done many odd things, but this is my first effort at rescuing people from the hands, sorry, the paws of crazed research animals. Fine. What if we open these doors, stand off to the side? When the dogs come out, we can trank them. Hmm. Sounds like a plan. Except for one little change. I'm not taking any prisoners. You cannot just kill these animals, Mr. Strange. They are expensive research animals. I didn't see you complain when you split Fido's head open with a tree limb. That was to save you. And when the rest of his buddies had their eyes blown out? You seemed okay with that. I was unconscious. I'm shooting anything that comes out of that room that's hairier than me. Now open the door. Let them know you're here. Ellie! It's me, Elizabeth Shaw. Don't move. We are coming in to get you. Keep talking. The dogs aren't coming. Are you okay? Elizabeth? What's happening? The dogs went crazy. They killed Charlie and Larry. Kay is here, but one of them bit her. She has lost a lot of blood. Elizabeth? The dogs are moving closer. Tell her to keep her head down. Why? What are you going to do? Oh, no, you can't shoot in there. You might hit Ellie or Kay. The dogs aren't coming this way. Do you have a better idea? No. Yes. What? This. Xanadu! Heel! Xanadu! The dogs turned and faced us. This was the first time I could see their faces. Their eyes were blood-colored, and I couldn't see any of the whites in their eyes or pupils. Only solid pools of angry redness. Spit flew from their mouths when they snapped. Their teeth were sharpened to points. The dogs looked at Elizabeth and then at me. I swear I thought I saw recognition in their eyes. They started to run directly at us. I'd be lucky to get off one shot before they were on top of me. I hit the first one square in the head, but he kept on coming. I unloaded the clip on him and he was almost on top of me before he realized he was dead. The second one veered off at the last minute. I spun as he went by, reloading the extra clip in the Glock. I was vaguely aware that Elizabeth had left my side and was running to Ellie and Kay. Elizabeth, are you okay? I'm fine. Do what you have to do. I ran in the direction of the second dog. I could have walked. I knew where he was going and what he was going to do when he got there. I turned the corner and there he was. For a moment it looked as if Larry's body had swallowed a dog. All I could see was the dog from the neck down. I knew, of course, that the dog was eating the inside of Larry, probably pulling on his heart or liver. Even though the dog sensed the impending danger, his urge to eat was overwhelming his sense of survival. I took aim and waited. The sound of meat tearing and being chewed filled the room. The dog was still growling, but it was a softer growl. His tail was wagging. Elizabeth, is everything okay? Kay needs a doctor. I tied off the wound, but she's lost a tremendous amount of blood. We have to get off the island. Who are you, handsome? Harry Strange, private investigator. And you are? This is Ellie and Kay. We need to go. Which way to the boat? Out this way. But it won't do any good. Only the doctor has the keys. Just get me to the boat. I'll do the rest. Kay, will you be able to walk? I'm not staying here. But if you want to put your arm around me and help... That won't be necessary. We can put you right up on this cart and push you to the docks. 
Okay. All right, we need to go. I've only got a few rounds left, and I'm not at all convinced that these Trank rifles will do more than make the dogs mad. Whoa, look out! Ah! Shoot them! Shoot them! Let me guess, the dog is on the other side of the door behind the dog. No. Really? There's another way? No. The dog is on the other side of the other door behind that one. Swell. Okay, I count six. Three on the left, two in the center, one in the front. We can do this, Elizabeth. You're the animal expert. Dead sleep for the alpha or nap sleep? The others won't move until he does. Why are you having a discussion? Just shoot them all! Dead sleep. The others will be confused at first. We can charge them. What do you mean, we? Just you two, right? Strength in numbers, Kay. I am not charging a pack of demon dogs. Demon dogs? Not fully, but some type of genetic splice, I think. Don't you agree? Agree with what? Don't mind him. He has a thing about vampires and demons. Now, scream and run. It's working. They're running away. They're scattering, but they'll be back shortly. Quickly, everyone inside. The cart is stuck. I can't get it. Ellie, move. Let me push it. Elizabeth, hold the door for me. Go. I've got it. Elizabeth, hurry. They're coming back. Harry! Harry, help me! Harry! Ellie, close this door behind me. What? You can't do that. Oh, my God! What? What's happening? I can't see. Ellie, tell me what's going on. Harry just jumped in front of Elizabeth. Get out! You can't hold them all! Remember the beach. They're tougher than you think. Crap, that hurts like a son of a... Go! I'm so going to regret jumping in with these dogs. What? Someone else is shooting the dogs. What? The dogs are dead, but I can't see who killed them. Harry, are you okay? I'm fine, mostly. Get behind me. Are those your guys? Hardly. They look like pirates. They have no right to be here. Yeah, well, under the circumstances, I'm okay with the little... Carmen! Harry! Harry is kissing the woman with the rifle guys. Is she pretty? She looks like the girl in the movie with Joe Pesci. That Italian girl? Yeah, Marissa something. How did you find me? I'll explain later. What's going on? Who are you? The woman who just saved you? Excuse me. Who do you think you're talking to? Um, an administrative assistant who should be grateful she's not puppy chow. How dare you? Girls, right now we need to get moving. I don't know how many of those dogs are left. What are they? Bad dogs. How did you and the rifle team get here? I have a charter on the other side of the island. Radio them. Have them get to this side of the island. There's an injured woman in there. If we can get a medevac, so much the better. I wouldn't do that. Why not? This is a restricted access island. If you radio to the mainland from here, Homeland Security will respond as well. You and Miss Carmen don't look like the type who do well with the authorities. I've dressed the leg. She will be fine as long as you get her to a hospital. So that's what we did. We took Ellie and Kay to St. Augustine General. Elizabeth was able to get into the comm tower and... From what she could see via the monitors that watched all activity on the island, most of the dogs were dead. Apparently, Carmen had brought a few of her own sonic smashing things, and when calibrated for dogs, they were quite accurate. Carmen and I found my car, still parked in the lot with 17 parking tickets crammed under the windshield. It was time to regroup and counterattack. Tonight's episode, Harry Strange 113, St. Luna Island, was written and directed by Tony Serechia and produced by Brianne Ahern. All material is copyrighted by Tony Serechia and used with his permission. Featured in tonight's cast were Laura Post, Ryan Lassard, Kellen Stennett, Nancy Riggs, Chelsea Arnold, and Sylvia Galan. Harry's opening theme music was written and performed by Lance Hogan and is copyrighted by Lance Hogan and used with his permission. Contact Lance at his email, h-a-u-g-a-n-l at yahoo.com. Incidental music was written and performed by Kevin McLeod and is copyrighted by Kevin McLeod and used with his permission. Visit incompetech.com for more of Kevin's music. 
To keep up with the latest news and information on everyone's favorite private investigator, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash harrystrangeradio. Send your questions, comments, and suggestions to producer at harrystrange.com. For the Harry Strange Radio Drama, I'm Joanne Pruden. Good night.